All right, welcome to another episode of Same Cast Different Day Podcast. I'm your host, Martel Rowling. Thank you all for tuning in, downloading, and streaming this episode. Thank you all for listening. Don't forget to follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram, which is at SCDD Podcast. So thank y'all all for tuning in. So what I want to get in here and talk about real quick, this is not the official episode of this week, but I just want to talk about this real quick because I keep forgetting to talk about it. So what I want to talk about is Kanye West and Kim Kardashian divorce and some other stuff. But first, I want to start off with their divorce because I finally got somebody on the line who actually know who just Jafari uh, boy is. Uh, so can you explain to me and the people out there who don't know who Jafari is? The guy that uh, allegedly Kanye West had a affair with the uh, the white super gay dude. Jeffrey Star. Oh, that's his name, Jeffrey. <laughs> I was close enough. I was close enough. <laughs> I was close enough, okay? Well, can you explain to the people who he is? Because I don't know who he is. Like, what is he famous for? Jeffree Star, Jeffree Star is like this multi millionaire, like, makeup mogul, like, he's like this is on YouTube, Instagram, like, he's this rapper, So, so do you believe that that's the he's the reason why Kim and Kanye are getting a divorce, or do you think it's because of Kanye West's whole bipolar thing that he has going on and was trying to run for president? I really don't feel like it's from Jeffree Star. I really feel like it's it's him. It's his whole demeanor. Like Kim's probably sick of it. Like I'm pretty sure Kanye freaks out all the time, and with, and I'm pretty sure she just can't deal with it. So I haven't, I haven't watched Keeping Up with the Kardashian in like years. So is he when they got married? Did he become an actual part of the show? Like he's like a like on a show every week, or was it just Kim? No, he he was basically he was on every blue moon because every time like he'll do this like oh he's he's here he's in um what was that in what city he was in I think it was like. So why are they assuming? So why are they assuming that him and uh, I was about to call him Jafari again, uh, yeah. Jeff Jeffrey. <laughs> Why would people assume that they was having an affair? Is what I wanted to know. Uh, you know, to be honest, I've never, I, I haven't heard that. Before. I haven't heard that. But it's been all over social I, media. I, but I wouldn't put it past them because first of all, Kanye West is a fashion, and so all that other crap like that, and Jeffree Star is too. And I'm pretty sure that the two words collide. You know, so that's why I'm pretty sure it has came up in the past that he has been messing with. Allegedly. Mm. Messing with you know, other people. That's uh, what I've seen. Uh, but I haven't heard anything about him and him and Jeffree Star. I reckon if, if, if you've seen Jeffree Star. I mean, yeah, I've seen the pictures when people okay. when people post like uh, t- uh articles and they be talking about the whole Kanye and J- uh Jeffrey thing. My microphone is not acting right. Um, when they when, when they talk about him, that's when I see like the pictures and everything. They post the articles, but as far as yeah, I I, I don't see yeah. So Yeah, true. Um, so one other thing I wanted to talk about because I talked about this on the wine cast. I don't know if it, how many of you actually watched the wine cast, but um, um, I can't remember the girl name again. But 
they accused her of being having hoish ways because now she with Michael B. Jordan. I think she was with some other rappers at some point. Yes, there we go. Yes, her. <laughs> Who? You ain't talking about mustache, Steve Harvey, is you? Yes, that's Steve Harvey's daughter. You a law lawyer. No, that's his daughter, yes. Steve Harvey. Think like a man, Steve Harvey. Yes. He's the comedy Steve Harvey. Can we choose Steve Harvey? Yes. Oh, well, then, hell, ain't like she ain't got no money. Then go ahead and go for it, then, girl. You just confirmed what I needed. All right. <laughs> No, you leave her alone now. She living her best life, and uh, everybody gotta get their hoeing out that system. Maybe she's still young and just trying to get her hoeing out her system. I ain't mad at her. <laughs> I'm not at her. Do what you do, girl. Right. Uh. Just don't leave me. Are you the best friend? <laughs> oh my goodness, I don't know what to do. What is wrong with you people? Trump. <sighs> Trump is gone. By the point this, by the time this episode will come out, Trump is gone, and they should be starting uh, the uh, the indictment charges at that at this point. <laughs> you, you need some like, you need some like, some sounds for your podcast. Like, just like clapping noise. Like, no. Nah, I'm good. I don't need that. Yeah, no. Just why if they can, if I can have a clapping noise because Trump gone, like no. Anything, if anything, I keep on saying, since you want to get on Trump again, uh, uh, if anything, I feel like this was a good, we needed Trump to be in office this last four years for America to learn a lesson about who they vote for, uh, for as president and politicians and all these other things. So this was a good wake up call and a learning lesson for America. So we actually needed Trump to be in office to learn this lesson. I think that it would have been a lot of chaos, yes, yeah, still, and not like in a like not like the chaos that Trump has produced over the last four years, like chaos as in you know that it was majority uh Republicans that was in the lower house and the houses and stuff uh so during that time where by Hillary being a democratic president and basically Republicans being the ones who was in control of passing laws the laws that she would have needed to get passed and the things she would have needed to get done in order to have a successful presidency uh, wouldn't have happened. It, it wouldn't, none of that, it wouldn't have happened. It would have made her presidency look basically mediocre and, and not worth the votes that the whole process of what everything. So with that being said on that end, as far as when it comes to that, it would have, it would be chaos on that end. I mean, they are because Congress is majority Republicans, so. But with this last election now, uh, Democrats control both houses now. So, so with Joe Biden coming in and being a Democratic president, the stuff that he needs to get passed, this is this is why your chain, knowing your chain of command, and why voting is so important for the people who only vote for president. That president cannot do nothing for you is if Congress, who is like almost like more Congress nearly has more power than the president. Only thing they can't do is tell the president is is go and and say, hey, go attack this country. That's about the only thing Congress can't do. Congress nearly got more power than the president. So if, if you have a Democratic president, you voted your Democratic president in, but you didn't go and vote for your congressmen and women so that your Democratic president can get laws and stuff passed so that he can help you out and be able to do things to you to help you live comfortably and help your life become better. They can't do that because you didn't vote for your congressmen and women to get into Congress and help pass the laws that he needed passed to make his to for his agenda to work. And that's what people don't understand. Like even for Republicans, like, oh, okay, you voted your Republican president in, but now the House is majority, I mean, the Congress, you know, is majority Democrats. So now that Republican president can't get nothing he wants passed because the Democrats are going to shoot everything now. And that's just the way how things is. 
So like I keep telling people, you have to you have to go vote for all levels of government. You can't just vote for president. You have to vote for all levels of government, all the way down to your alderman. You have to go vote for all them things. Yeah, it's right. all there. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, and, and that is true. But my only thing is, at for so for those people who are considered middle class America, whether it is a Democratic in office, a Democrat president, or a Republican, no matter whether it's the House, local government, whatever, no matter what it is, you're screwed regardless. Because once again. None of those parties look out for the middle class people. You no, know, Republicans only look out for people who, uh, who are who makes over probably a hundred, probably over three hundred thousand dollars a year. They only care about them people, and Democrats only care about people who are considered below poverty, making less than twenty thousand dollars a year. Those are the only people that Democrats really care about. So, if you that person that's the middle class, you know, there's really no no party that's really there to stand up for you and fight for you and do anything for you there's just no no party whatsoever for you so it's basically you just choosing the the lesser of all evils when it comes out to voting I mean, when you consider a middle class citizen the people who's like let's see and probably need more help than middle class middle class you're okay you're getting by you're doing your thing but that that's the class, but then that's the they just assume that since you're middle class, you're just okay, you're just getting by. Like, this middle class people, yes, I'm considered middle class, but they're still living check to check, and they're one paycheck, or what should I say, two or three paychecks away from losing it all. So, and like I said, it's the middle class people who pays the taxes to that helps the, the people who of, of lower class, you know, be able to get food stamps and free health care and all these other programs. And then, like, you don't see... He, as you can see, these Republicans who has not paid taxes in the last since President Trump has been in office, you know, they have not paid taxes. So they it, every uh, for the last four years uh, with this current presidency that we will well, with Trump's presidency, it's been the middle class people who has been flipping the bill and keeping this country moving. And without those middle class people. There would the lower class people would not be able to survive because, like I had said before, uh, in one of my other po- episodes of the podcast, like Amazon had got a tax credit. I mean, they had they had got a tax credit for a uh, hundred and nineteen, like a hundred nineteen hundred twenty million dollars in twenty nineteen from the U.S. government, but yet they did not pay no taxes whatsoever. But the U.S. government gave that gave that company a hundred and nineteen million dollars and like i said and like i said it's the middle class people who has been flipping the bill during the whole trump presidency to keep this country going but yet it's the middle class people who get ignored it's the little class middle class people who actually suffering the most right now because at the end of the day a lot of these programs that's out here that's designed that for people to go to and get help a lot of these people in middle class who are suffering right now do not qualify because they consider they make too much money, but in for in, in they really do need the help. But now they're out here suffering because, you know, I make two thousand dollars over the limit, and now I the help I do need, I can't get that help. Mm-hmm. But even e- even during these times, like like even during these times, for the middle class people who is still working, like I said, these middle yeah, I think like these middle class people who still have to get up and go to work every day, you know, they gotta they don't get free child care, so they they still gotta pay five or six hundred dollars per week per child to go to child care, on top of on top of having to spend and on top of having to spend cash 
for food and everything because they make too much money, consider they make too much money, they don't qualify to get the food stamps that they're being given out. So they are still doing everything out of pocket. And then on top of that, because considering that a lot of stuff is closed, you know, a lot of these people have to cut back on hours in order to be able to, to stay afloat. And it's like I said, it's only so much they can do. Oh, no, it's daycares that's open, but like I said, they no, I, these people are still. Yeah, not when it first happened, no. But now, like these nurses and doctors and these people who are considered, you know, essential workers need child care to be open in order to go go to work and do these essential jobs. But like I said, they're not getting help to help pay for child care. And like I said, they still responsible for showing up to work. They still responsible for all these bills. Like they're not getting no help and all these other things and like they're not getting uh assistance with their rent oh well you don't qualify for that because you make too much money so we can't give you no money to help you pay a rent this month you know all these kind of things exactly That is, our government don't see it that way. Yeah, our government don't see it that way. So I actually, I actually had to wrap this up because I gotta get ready for a, a, a something at nine o'clock. So I want to thank you all for tuning in and listening to this episode of Same Cast Different Day Podcast. Uh, don't forget to follow the podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, on Facebook, it's at the same cast, different day podcast. On Instagram and Twitter, it's at SCDD podcast. You can follow me on Instagram at Martel Rolling. And on Facebook, it's just Martel Rolling. And uh, Darrell is somewhere out there in Twitter land and Instagram land. So y'all can go find him on there. Yeah, I don't, I don't give out my private Facebook page. But anyways, yeah. So thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Same Cast Different Day Podcast. Uh, thank you all for joining in and listening. And thank you all for the continued support of the podcast. We uh, we are over 600 downloads. So thank you all. That means a lot to us. Uh, so thank you for tuning in and listening. And see y'all next week.